What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday, and today we are having a versus of the DX9 Rick Defend versus the new Fans Toys Warthog. Now, some of you may already know where I stand on this, but you may not, in fact, because it is more complicated than you might understand. And that's not to downgrade your intelligence or level of comprehension. It's more so to say that my preferences have a lot more to do with nuance. But we will get to that. We're going to get to it very shortly. Once again, we had a Sit Down Saturday here last week. This Sit Down Saturday is here because it's a versus and then next week's and everything for a while should be back on the Patreon, which you're welcome to join. I do have to do a little bit of housekeeping, which I don't usually have to do much anymore, <laughs> but a little bit this time. So there was a number of people that talked about like my level of ability regarding transformations and whether or not I'm not patient enough or I'm not easy handed enough and et cetera, et cetera. Like, and I, I mean, no offense, but are you dumb? It's what I do here. If you want gentle lily pad hands and fingers, go look somewhere else. It's not what I do. I do the regular guy stuff. I work with my hands, I manipulate figures the same way. The good news is, is that when they hold up, for instance, this fan's toy is even held up with as much as I was gripping onto it, so to speak, then you can take some sort of solace in the fact that the materials will hold up under pressure, which is something to know. I'm not a dainty guy, I never will be. Stop going to Burger King looking for pizza. And the Leonardo, uh, the scheduling of that got messed up. It was supposed to come out Monday, came out Friday. It's whatever. Fantastic figure, but uh, some people mentioned in the comments that the turtle shell is actually compatible with Gundam, so I wanted you to know that. And also that I mentioned the turtle van and that I didn't see enough sprues to make a turtle van. Apparently, the turtle van is like a builder figure that's going to come between all the turtles. So like, this one came with the tires, the next one might come with the cab or whatever, and then et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's all I have to mention. Real quick before we get started, I was working on this the same day that my wife was at work. And the question was, do I wait for her to get home to get her opinion on the presence. And normally I would if it was like a tiebreaker type of thing. But my kids unanimously chose one of the options, which means it wouldn't have really mattered what she chose in terms of the scoring. Of course it matters to my heart. So you won't hear her lovely voice today. You're just going to hear from the kiddos because there was no need to wait for a fourth opinion. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and you know where we start. Accessory wise, they both come with the Hoist Goes to Hollywood mask. They both come with a blaster, almost identical in sculpt and paint. The Fans Toys comes with adapters for a flight stand. The DX9 came with the female character, as well as I think a flight stand independent to it, which gives the DX9 the advantage with accessories. Now, as for gimmicks, they both come with the heart-shaped box, as it were, inside the chest which ties them out for gimmicks. Moving on to build and materials. So the materials on the fans toys feel much better. The plastics feel better. The die cast added weight makes the whole figure feel better in hand. Whereas the DX9 has good feeling plastics but doesn't have that same kind of oomph in hand. Now, in regards to build, the DX9 is infinitely better. The knees are better, the ankles are better. Everything about it in that regard is more sturdy, more secure, more put together, and just better. Hardware-wise, they both tie out because neither of them have any significant hardware. Moving on to sculpt and paint, I don't think... So, look, paint is going to go to Fans Toys. They're both actually fairly well painted, and neither of them spare the brush, but the Fans Toys one just gets the color right. I don't know how the DX9, in hindsight, like managed to miss that. One is salmon, and one is red. So, in that regard, Fans Toys is going to take the paint because it's more accurate, it's more appropriate, even if it wasn't more accurate for the character. But they both use a lot of paint. Presentation-wise, from the front, I'll be honest, I don't think either of them edge the other out when you take the paint away. I don't think either of the feet look great. I don't think either of the lower legs look great. I think they both do parts right about the torso and other parts not so right. They both kind of get the proportions well enough. DX9's proportions are more accurate. Fans Toys are more heroic. I tend to prefer more heroic but that doesn't mean that the DX9 is wrong. So I'm going to tie them out from the front. Looking at the head, once again, they're both painted. Sculpt-wise, I don't think there's anything significant about one over the other. I think that the DX9 is far more accurate to the cartoon model, but that's its own category that we'll get to later. But I don't think that any is more spectacular. And that is usually where Fans Toys would win with me because usually I feel like they nail a head sculpt. This one, I kind of feel like they do a fair enough job. From the side, I think if we can all be honest with ourselves, if only for a second... There's nothing really distinguishable about one over the other. Sculpt-wise, the DX9 takes it. Far more interesting sculpt work to look at. It's more cohesive. It comes together better. The wings sit all over the place on the fans' toys. It doesn't look cohesive. It looks messy, it looks sloppy, and it looks unfinished. From the side, I'm going to tie it out. I like the sculpt work better on the DX9, but I like the cleanliness of the backpack better on the fans' toys, which would give one point to each tying them out from the side. 
Pelvis wise, I think I had to give the frontal view to Fans Toys. While the DX9 has more interesting sculpt work, the frontal view over the Fans Toys, the details in the middle, the blue, yellow, and red accents look more pronounced and purposeful. Whereas for the DX9, it feels like they're trying to fit them in that space and it looks a little squished and rushed. From the side, it goes to DX9 because it actually looks like something as opposed to nothing, which is what the Fans Toys looks like here. Looking at the legs, the upper legs, I think the sculpt work on the DX9 just looks more interesting. Those three rectangles and that one bump out square for the knee do more for me than just the stripe across the upper thigh. The lower legs for me are a mixed bag. I actually like the big feet on the Fans Toys. I think it gives him more of an intimidating look, but I like the general shape and aesthetic and cleanliness of the DX9 shins. So I'm gonna tie them out from the lower legs. From the side, I think Fans Toys is better just because it doesn't show the kind of articulation engineering for the upper leg. For the lower leg, I mean, I think it's a tie. I like the kind of the way they did the thruster bits on the lower leg for Fans Toys. I don't think the feet look great on either, but I think the feet on the DX9 do look better than the feet for the fans toys from the side. So I'm tying them out there. From the back, I don't think that either are immaculate, but I don't think that either are a disaster either. I think that they both have pros and cons, so I'm gonna tie them out. So they tie for the frontal view, they tie for the rear view. They tie at the head because they're both very similar. The DX9 is more narrow, the fans toys is more wide, that's about the only difference. They tie at the pelvis because the fans toys does it better from the front, DX9 from the side. The lower legs are also a tie. Fans toys takes the arms because they look better are just generally all around and more cohesive in my opinion. DX9 takes the torso, chest area, abdomen area because the front looks better and to be honest, so does the side. The side on either isn't really remarkable, but if a Gundam was put into my head and I had to make a decision, I would still pick the DX9. But even if I tied them out, the point would go, still go to DX9 because it takes the front. Articulation wise, the DX9 has swivels. It can look up and it can look down. It can also collapse for a clean look. The Fans Toys can look up a bit can't really look down and has the swivel. DX9 has a waist swivel. Fans Toys has a more limited waist swivel, but you can kind of technically say it has an ab crunch. The shoulders on the DX9 get you out past 90 degrees. The shoulder pad moves around it and then you get the 360 around. The Fans Toys get you 290 degrees and 360 around. Bicep swivel, bicep swivel. Double jointed elbow for the full run. Double jointed elbow for a little shy of the full run. Wrist swivel. Fingers on a base pen knuckle, wrist swivel, fingers on a base pen knuckle. Hips get out to almost the full Van Dam and almost the full Monty. Hips get out for the full Van Dam and the full Monty. Single hinge knee for 90 degrees, technically a double hinge knee for 90 degrees. No ankle tilt up, you do get an ankle tilt down and a limited rocker. Ankle tilt up. Ankle tilt down, an ugly one, but it's there in a limited rocker. So they tie at the bicep, wrist, and hands. I'm gonna tie them at the waist because DX9 gets a fuller rotation. The Fans Toys gets a kind of squint and tilt your head ab crunch. They tie at the knees because they both get 90 degrees. They tie the thigh swivel. DX9 takes the head for a larger range of motion plus a better down. The shoulders for a wider range of motion. The elbows for a wider range of motion. Fans Toys takes the hips for a wider range of motion and the ankles for a wider range of motion, giving DX9 the edge of three over two. Scale wise. He's supposed to come up to, Beachcomber is supposed to come up to his shoulders. Sea Spray is supposed to be above his shoulders. Sea Spray's head, that is. Also, his head is supposed to line up roughly with Sideswipe's elbow. So this one is slightly too tall. This one is way too tall. So scale-wise, just going off the information I have here, I think either will work fine personally, but if I'm talking about what's more accurate, DX9 takes it. Transformation-wise, I mean, I don't even think this one is really worth talking about a whole lot. I think it's obvious. The DX9 is fun, it's intuitive, it's clever. It doesn't get in the way. It's rewarding at the end. It does everything it's kind of supposed to do. The Fans Toys, on the other hand, does some really clever stuff in the upper body and then sort of throws the baby out with the bathwater in the lower body, making for a complete nightmare of a transformation to have to handle. And actually getting it back in robot mode ain't no Mardi Gras neither, but it's better than the first, you know, it's more um, diluted, it's, 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 it's better. I threw up on a third one, you believe that? Anyway, I just think the DX9 one is a better engineered, better thought out, better designed 
transformer. Now alt mode, and we'll just go ahead and imagine that I was able to get it all lined up right, is where Fans Toys really smashes the competition. DX9 went for a very cartoon take. It's far more cartoon accurate. Fans Toys went for a very realistic take, making it look much more interesting, much more menacing, much more intimidating, and much more engaging. Plus the red paint pops, it all kind of works and comes together for this mode. Whereas the DX9 one looks silly in my opinion in comparison, giving Fans Toys the edge. Moving on to accuracy. I'm going to tie them out. I don't think neither of them really get it. The fans toys arms are very accurate. The abdominal area isn't because of the messiness of it. Neither of them get the head exactly right. However, I think that the DX9 is closer. The thighs are closer on the fans toys. Neither of them get the lower legs right. However, the DX9 is closer and neither of them get the wings quite right. And I think to varying degrees of success. So I'm going to tie them out, even though I think the DX9 probably probably takes it because the alt mode is also more accurate but I've never talked about the alt mode when doing this kind of stuff in regard to accuracy so I'm not going to start throwing a monkey wrench in it now price wise the DX9 was $80 when it dropped and as you all know this just dropped around 140 or so obviously DX9 came out at a different time inflation blah 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 I get it but it's the only kind of scale or metric I can go by I wonder if I could look up what this $80 from 2000 whatever equal to now so I was able to, and it's still $80 would be $100 today. So still smokes the competition. Which one do you think looks better? Uh, this one. And pick them up. Pick them up. Thank this you. one feels better. Okay. Which one do you think looks better? That one. All right. And which one feels better? This one's short. And that one. Okay. Hey, which one do you think looks better? That one. This one? <laughs> okay. Uh, here you go. Which one do you think feels better? This one. So they tie in gimmicks because they both have the open chest piece. They tie in hardware because neither of them use them. They tie in sculpt, which is probably fair. One's going for a more old school masterpiece look and I think the DX9 was going more for a tune look. However, they also tie in accuracy because neither of them get that look quite right. Fans Toys takes the materials because they're just flat out better. They take the paint, which helps it present better in my opinion. It also takes the alt mode because it's just infinitely beyond because it goes for a more realistic look over the hyper tune look. And it won presents due to my kids. And I think that's fair, honestly. DX9 takes accessories, it has more. It takes build, mainly because of the knees and the ankles, actually, and even the wings. It takes the articulation by a nose, and I think that is debatable, and someone could tie them out to their own personal preference if they wanted there. Because you're talking about range of motion with a lot of the joints, not necessarily engineering. DX9 takes the scale because the Fans Toys is too big. They're both too big, arguably, but the Fans Toys is even bigger, which makes the DX9 closer. DX9 takes the transformation because it's not even debatable, and it also takes the price because that's clearly objective, which gives DX9 the win over Fans Toys 6-4. to four. And of course, we'll break this score down a little bit more here in the conclusion. And I'll be honest with you, I think that that's a fair scoring. This Fans Toys figure, I need to talk to you about for a minute. I'm probably going to put this figure on my shelf and remove the DX9. And you know why? Presence. Simply presence. The big feet, the more heroic proportions, and the popping of the color red make it look better to me. Part of that reason is because it looks less cartoon accurate. And I don't want something super cartoon accurate. I much prefer the era where it was a blend of cartoon accuracy with a little bit of style. Particularly fans toy style, which I think aesthetically this does have. And I like the way that looks. I hate the way it's built. It's not a good figure. It's a bad figure, in fact. One of the worst figures I've looked at this year. And I've looked at some trash this year. But it looks good. And that's 90% of what I needed to do. The other 10% is hold some sort of a modest pose, which it can also do. But we always discuss more nuance with this stuff now, right? So let's get into some different categories based on the wins. So let's talk about the best display piece which is based on build, which goes to DX9, sculpt, which is a tie, paint, which goes to fans toys, and presence, which goes to fans toys, making fans toys the winner of the best display category. Let's talk about best transformer. Build, which goes to DX9, materials, which goes to fans toys, transformation, which goes to DX9, making DX9 the best transformer. And most playable, you have build, which goes to DX9, materials that go to fans toys, articulation that goes to DX9, but I would allow you to debate it, transformation that goes to DX9, and accessories that go to DX9, which even with the debate would give the edge to DX9. So aside from display, DX9 takes it, and that's 
100% in accordance with how I'm displaying my stuff. And people will argue this, people will say that my opinions on this is wrong. They often argue the categories with this stuff, but they never argue what is wrong about the categories. They just say that I'm wrong. And I, I try not to play in that sandbox anyway. I know that anytime I say anything about fans toys, everybody gets all emotional. It's not because I don't like fans toys. In fact, I like fans toys an awful lot, but I like fans toys to be better than what they're currently putting out. This same thing happened when I started critiquing to Takara harsher. When I started being more harsh in my opinions towards the direction that Takara was going with their masterpiece, everybody said I was out of my mind. And now here we are two years later, and a lot of people, in fact most people, in fact the majority of my comments when reviewing their products agree with me. Bobby's crazy till Bobby's right. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, until next time, take care.